Hi, it's Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this easy mask necklace. We are part of a homeschool group and I teach a couple classes there, and all day long we have to put our masks on and off because when we travel through the hallways or when we um, go to the bathroom or when I get close to students I need to put my mask on but if I'm up in front of the classroom I can take it off and same with the students if they're sitting in their seat and not moving around they can take theirs off so it means that you have to constantly look for your mask throughout the day so I thought of making this crocheted necklace that has two clips on the bottom that clips onto your mask temporarily for the day and you can put it on and off very easily and then you don't have to worry about trying to find a pocket or a bag or find it under papers which is what I was doing for the first couple weeks that our group met it's a very simple pattern. I show you all the steps in this video. I also show you a couple alternatives, how to make it adjustable, and how to also embellish it with different things if you don't want to make these flowers. So don't forget to subscribe and have fun making this. Here is a close-up of the Easy Mask necklace. As you can see, the cord ends on a jump ring right here, and then you attach this lanyard hook to the jump ring, and you do the same on the other side. And then the embellishments, I put about two inches up from the end. You can see that the cord is just one long piece. So now I'm going to go over the supplies you'll need for this. If you'd like to make the dainty version uh, or the thinner version that I made and just showed you, then you'll want to use a size 3 cotton crochet thread. I like to use this Lisbeth size 3 thread, 100% Egyptian cotton, comes in so many beautiful colors. Uh, I have been able to find this at Hobby Lobby. I get a lot sent to me because I use it in a lot of my designs that are published in magazines. Uh, but you can also order it online. You just need to go to handyhands.com and the link to that will be in the description below. And this has a really nice stiffness to it and also a really pretty sheen. So it's great for this project since we're just basically uh, crocheting one row. And then you'll need a size 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. That's a C. This one's nice. It's by Clover. It's a soft touch. Uh, this way it has a nice bigger handle even though this is a small hook. It prevents your hand from cramping and just makes it easier to hold as you're working with the thinner yarn, especially if you're not used to it. But these stitches are very simple and the project goes quickly. But I highly recommend this type of hook. Uh, you'll find a link to that in the description below. Then you'll also need, for every necklace, you will need two jump rings. You find these in the jewelry section of your local craft store. Again, the link uh, to where you can find these or see a picture of these will be in the description below. And I use two 8 millimeters, so they're this size. You can see they're rather large um, for jewelry, but for this project they're just right. And you want to get the heavy duty kind. Uh, you can tell, if it doesn't say it on the package, you can just tell that they're um, thick and if you were to try to pull them apart, because there is an opening there for attaching to jewelry, we won't need that. But if it's hard to, to move apart with your fingers and you would need pliers, then you know it's a nice heavy duty one and it'll uh, hold your mask onto your cord very well. And then you'll also need two lanyard hooks per necklace. So you can see these are the kind that are used in so many different things. They're very lightweight. They stay clipped on. 
but then they're very easy to clip and unclip. And these are the standard size. They're about an inch long. So you need two of those for each necklace. And then you'll also need a yarn needle so you can sew a bunch of things together. And of course, there's so many different embellishments that you can use, and I'll show you some options for that later once we get to that part of finishing the necklace. To start your mask necklace, you'll want to put your slip knot on your hook. Then you'll take one of the jump rings and slide it onto the hook. Then you yarn over and pull through the jump ring like that and also through the loop on your hook. So that's basically a slip stitch or a chain right around the ring. Then you're going to chain 121. Remember you can mark them with a stitch marker every 20 and that way if you get interrupted you just count by 20 and you don't have to go back and count all the little chains. I'm just going to do a few to show you. Now if you do go longer than 121 it's no big deal. Yours would just be longer than mine and mine is 22 inches uh, from jump ring to jump ring. So once you've gotten to the end of 121 chains you're going to put the second jump ring over your hook and do the attaching again yarn over pull through the ring and through the loop on your hook and now you'll have a 22 inch approximately chain between two jump rings like this Once we have both jump rings attached, we're going to start working back in the chain. We'll be working in the back of the chain. I like to do that a lot, especially if we're making a cord. And you're going to work in the back bump of the chain. I have a video just on how to do that. You'll see that pop up here. But before I show you with this small thread, I'm going to show you how to do this stitch that we're about to do with this larger thread so it's easier for you to figure it out. So here's the front of the chain. You would flip the chain over and now you see all these bumps and we're going to insert our hook into these back bumps of the chain. But before we do that we're going to do a yarn over so we can do the stitch I like to call the yarn over slip stitch. So you yarn over, put your hook into the back bump, then you're going to yarn over, pull through the chain, and pull through those two loops on your hook. And that's all there is to it. So you yarn over. I like to hold that yarn over while I insert the hook into the back bar of the chain yarn over, pull through the chain, and then keep on going through the two loops on your hook. I'll do it again. Yarn over, hold the yarn over, put your hook into the chain, yarn over. Now what I do, I pull it through the chain, and then I shift my helping hand to hold a little bit closer so I can pull through those two loops easily. One more time. Yarn over, hold that, hook into the chain, yarn over, pull through, shift my helping hand, pull through two. Now this side looks neat, but this stitch is looking best when you flip it over and look at the back. So these nice slashes here will give some interest to the cord and it will look really pretty on the necklace. So here you can see what the cord would look like in the size 3 thread. So here we are 
We've just attached it to the jump ring. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to turn the chain over, and here's my first one. Here we're attached to the ring. Here's my first one. Yarn over, put my hook into that first back bump, Yarn over, pull through the back bump, shift my helping hand to hold closer, yarn over, put my hook in, yarn over, pull through the chain, then yarn over and pull through those two loops. Here's my next bump. You can see it right here. Yarn over, put my hook in. Yarn over, pull through the chain. Shift my helping hand and pull through two. And I would continue like that all the way across after I've worked all the way across my cord and I'm coming up on that second jump ring I'll do my last yarn over slip stitch right here and then I have no more chains to work into so I'll put my hook into that jump ring yarn over pull through the jump ring and through the loop on my hook and then I will cut the yarn, yarn over one more time to pull through, make that nice and tight. And there I have my cord attached to both jump rings. I'm going to take these two ends right here and bring them so they're both on the same side of the jump ring, just makes it neater. And I'll tie those in a double knot and then weave the ends in and there I have my basic cord now I'm going to show you how to make your mass necklace adjustable I made mine 22 inches as I mentioned before but that might be too long if you're making this for a child or it might be too short for someone else who would like more length to their necklace. So you can have them customize it and you would just make a longer cord so they can adjust it on their own. So I chained 150 and I did not attach it to the jump rings. I just created the cord like this and then I picked up a metal cord stop. I got this at Hobby Lobby. You can find them online. Sometimes they're uh, round plastic circles, but they all work the same way in that they have a spring inside, and when you push the outside, it lines up the holes. So that's where you would put the two cords through, but when you let go, the spring pushes this inner mechanism out, and that pinches the cords and keeps them from moving, hence a metal cord stop. This one actually can go through the wash. So if you want to wash your uh, mass necklace after a while, this will be safe. So after making the cord, just like the other one, you're just going to chain longer. I took the yarn tails, put them on my yarn needle, and guided through one of the holes, like so and you want to make sure you squeeze so you can get that cord through and probably want to go about halfway and then the other end of the cord this actually doesn't have any yarn tails because um, it's that side where we turned to work on the chain so I just took a small piece of the matching yarn and threaded it through the end like that so now I have something attached and then I'll thread those two ends through my yarn needle and now I'll go through the other hole in the cord stop pressing it in of course so that hole is as open as it can be and 
Just thread it through like I did with my other one. And there you can see now it has some adjustability to it. So you can squeeze it and make the cord shorter or squeeze it and pull it back and make the cord longer. Since we didn't crochet the jump rings on at the beginning because we had to th thread it through our cord stop, I just put the yarn tails on a yarn needle and then thread the yarn needle through the jump ring. This way I'm going to be getting rid of those yarn tails, weaving them in at the same time as attaching this jump ring. I just sew it on by going through the jump ring then through the end of the cord. Do that a couple times so it's nice and secure. And then when something like this and I have more than one yarn tail, I usually do a nice double knot because even if those yarn tails somehow come out of my project, they're not going to unravel on me. And there you see the jump ring nice and attached. And then just like the other version, I would use my lanyard hook and just link it on. And then when I'm ready to put my mask on, I just open that up and slip the mask on. Very, very easy. So that's the adjustable version. There are several different types of yarn you could use for this project. I am showing you with the size 3 cotton thread and you'll see that it's rather thin but it's nice uh, when you're wearing it because it so light you can't tell it's there. But if you don't have any of that or it's hard for you to see the stitches, you can use size 3 yarn like this. It's not cotton thread, it's size 3 yarn sport weight and I always use Sinfonia, a great cotton yarn, and it comes out just a little bigger. I used an F hook with this and then I also used an F hook and used some acrylic yarn which you probably have in your stash. Great examples of this would be Red Heart Soft or Simply Soft by Karen and Hobby Lobby also carries a couple of these. Sometimes you find them in the baby section because they're slightly thinner than let's say Red Heart Super Saver or a regular uh, medium weight yarn like I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby. If you'd like to use an acrylic yarn, I just recommend you pick a thinner one. But you can also use thicker yarns, it just means your cord would be a little thicker, but it works. To begin the flower, you'll be doing an adjustable ring. Although if you don't want to do an adjustable ring, you could just chain two and then work in the first chain or the second chain from the hook and do all the same things that I'm showing you right now. But here I'll show you an adjustable ring. Wrap the yarn around your hand, have the working end go to the side, put your hook under the loop you just created, grab that yarn and pull it through. And now we just need to pinch that right there so we don't lose our loop. And then chain one and that locks the loop in place. And we're actually going to chain one more so we have the height of a half double. And we're going to work five half doubles in this ring right here. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through all three. So, so far I've done three. four, five. And then this is what adjustable does. You pull that short yarn tail and it shrinks that starting loop to where you don't have any gap in the middle. So this here is the chain two at the beginning and we're just going to let that go to the back and we're going to slip stitch in the first half double crochet to close up our circle. Now to do each petal, there's only five petals, so we're going to chain two 
and then we're going to do a puff stitch. Puff stitch takes a little getting used to, but it's really not difficult at all. You yarn over, put your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and this is where it becomes a puff. You pull through and grab the bottom of the stitch and pull up. And you want, for this project, you want about a half an inch tall loop. I'm showing you with bigger yarn. Then yarn over and do that again. Hold the yarn over, put your hook in, yarn over, pull up, and pull it so it's the same height, about a half an inch tall. And we're going to do that three more times. Three, two, one. So that's a total of five times we just did that, and that's going to give us 11 loops on our hook. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Then we yarn over, twist, and pull through everything, and then chain one to close it up, then chain two more, and we're going to slip stitch right into that same stitch that all that puffy stuff went on. And that finishes our first petal. Then we're going to do it again in each of the next four stitches all the way around. So I put my hook in and I slip stitch. So now I'm in that stitch. Then I'm going to chain two. Then yarn over, put my hook into the stitch. Yarn over, pull up a nice tall loop. Yarn over, hook in. Yarn over, pull through, pull up a nice tall loop three more times. Three, two, one. Eleven loops on my hook. Yarn over. Make sure you twist the hook all the way down and it should fit through all those loops very easily if you twist the hook all the way down like that. Then chain one to close it. Then chain two more and you're going to slip stitch, hook in, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the loop on your hook to close up the petal. Now of course this isn't intended to do with such giant yarn, but I wanted you to be able to see how these puff stitches worked. Now I'd like to show you how to do the puff stitch with the thinner yarn, the cotton thread. So I've done my four petals and I'm going to do the last petal. So here you see the last stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into that. This is how every petal starts with the slip stitch. Then I chain two. Then I'm going to yarn over, put my hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and I set about a half inch long like that. And then I do that four more times. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up a half loop, half inch loop, Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up. That's three, four, five. Then I yarn over, pull through all 11 loops. Chain one to lock the puff in place. Chain two more so I can get back down here to the bottom. And I put my hook right into that same stitch that we've been doing all of the loops and there I have my puff stitch flower is complete. I'm going to cut the yarn, yarn over once to pull that ending knot tight and then what I'll do is I'll use these yarn tails to sew the puff stitch flower onto the cord. I did it about two inches up and made sure they were both the same distance up from the jump ring. And then what you could do to make it a nice finishing touch on the back, you could put a piece of matching felt and sew that on or hot glue that on. Or you could just take another one of the flowers and sew it on the back. And then that way, no matter which way your cord hangs around your neck, you would see a flower and you wouldn't see 
this back part. And I notice that when you wear it, sometimes it hangs up like that. And sometimes the flowers show and sometimes it twists around. So if you put one on the back and one on the front, you don't have that problem. Instead of the flower, you might actually like to embellish your mask necklace with something else. And there are so many options out there. Here are a few of the things that I tried. I thought buttons would be cute. And of course, we love Ola from Frozen. So I had these buttons on hand and I sewed this one to this side and I thought what would look cute would be the sparkly button slash bead that I found at my local craft store and I would put that on the other side to match. Just make sure they're the same distance from the jump ring and I would just sew that on with a needle and thread. So that would be one thing you could do is use buttons. Uh, you could also, if you made the puff stitch flowers, you could use some Swarovski gems. We have a lot of these because we have an Irish dancer in the house. And glue those onto the center of the flowers and that would look real pretty. I have a lot of beads and a lot of bling. I always add, love to add a little sparkle. Another idea is you could use charms. So these are some Celtic knot charms that I have. Just sew those on with either the actual cotton thread or some matching sewing thread. So I could use those. There's some other kinds of more grown-up looking buttons. They just have that shank on the back. I would just nestle that right inside the crochet and sew it on securely. Butterfly beads. And those would look cute. Could add several beads. Another great option for making your necklace unique is to use some patches. There are so many patches available right now and if you look at the links in the description below, you'll see a bunch of recommendations that I have that I found on Amazon. So many different colors and themes. This would be great for a music teacher. And of course they are iron onable, but I would also, uh, since yarn doesn't always go well with ironing, you could melt your yarn. Uh, I would just use either hot glue or sew it on or sandwich it between a piece of felt on the back and then you would have a very unique necklace for your music teacher. There are so many different kinds of patches you can find now. Make sure you check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed making your easy mask necklace. I think they'll make great teacher gifts. Leave a comment below if you made yours or send me a photo. My email is also in the description below. Please don't forget to subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.